Welcome into the DNBR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNBR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts. I'm your host, Rudo, joined by AJ Hayfley. Shout out to a person on YouTube who named their account Free AJ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> still in Twitter jail, <laughs> confirmed. Shout, shout, out, shout out to the handful of people who have hit me up with, with Free AJ. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, mystery as to what tweet it was that caused him to go to Twitter jail. Yeah, so, this is my favorite part has been watching people like try and respond, and and it's just like nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. Like they when they they sent me the email saying I was suspended, it was for threatening violence, which is incredibly comical given that. I don't, not, not, not the most world's most violent guy here. Unless you're tweeting in your sleep. I don't know how you threatened. I've done that before, uh, but it was, it was just a screenshot of my lock screen at like three o'clock in the morning. Nice. Legendary tweet right there. And somebody, and somebody responded to it and was like, did you just sleep tweet? (laughs) And I deleted the tweet and I didn't want to tell him. Absolutely. I did. (laughs) So I just pretended like it never happened. Oh, now the whole world knows. Yeah, it's it's been long enough now that it's okay. Okay, all right. The time has passed. Uh, in any case, this is going to be a continuation of, of Rumor Millville. Uh, the treadmill never seems to stop. I think? like Rumorville. R- rumor Millville. Rumor Millville? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the town we live in now on this podcast. I, so I call it. I've always called it rumor porn, but I like rumor Millville better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that too. I think it's, it's better than rumor porn. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, because people get off on it. Get it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely makes sense. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't complicated. No. Wasn't trying to be clever. Yeah. Well, we live here now. Check out Washington's protected list for no reason. Uh, I accidentally clicked it. I was trying to go to the comments. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's um, pretty. It's it's pretty funny. Uh, um, those protection lists are so out of date. Yep. A week ago, we made yep. those, and like we just—it's just a—it's just, just a mess. Yep. Now they're just like Nashville saying they're going to expose Duchesne and Johansson, and it's like, well, hmm. I took. I remember when we did our first stab yeah. at the expansion drafts last year. Yeah, I had them. Ex- yeah. I had them exposing Duchesne, and somebody was like. That would never happen. You're an idiot. And I was like, yeah, maybe. AJ doesn't need a lawyer. That's going to the yacht fund. Thank you very much, Trevor. Yeah. And five dollars Canadian. Yeah. It's like two bucks. I, I have one of those around here. Oh, it's in my backpack. <laughs> I I found it uh randomly in my backpack the other day. It was a five dollar Canadian it was a Canadian five dollar bill, and I was like, it's so shiny and plastic. You're not gonna bring home a loony? Oh, I dude, I get rid of those immediately. Yeah, not a fan. <laughs> yeah, I get rid. I do not mess. I do not mess with change. Do not give me coins. All right. Well, if speaking of coins, there are some guys that are about to hit the free agent market I, who are looking for a lot of them. Speaking of change, nice. the Avs could uh, the Avs could be in for a change at their goalie position by the sound of today's rumors. So I want to get in. I've been I've been poking around the last uh, the last couple of days. I've been poking around trying to see, just trying to figure out how real some of this is. Sure. And and what's actually happening here? Because there's a lot of dudes with a lot of agendas uh, who are. I I guess we'll start here. This sounds yeah. good. I- Frank Saravalli tweeting, Darcy Kemper emerges as a primary target for both the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, plus, there are more goalies on the market, as well as a handful of other names from Giordano, Suter, Weber, and Jack Eichel. Um, obviously, the focus here being Darcy Kemper being linked to the Avs, in our case. 
So, in my poking around, um, I don't want to say I don't want to say that the Avs are not interested in bringing back Philip Grubauer. I don't want to say that they're not trying to make an effort here, but let's let's say that the feeling the feeling that I get is that they'd love to have him back at a certain price point especially because he's made it clear he wants to stay in Colorado. Yeah. I mean at this point if an av were to show up at somebody's birthday party just randomly because he just happened to be in the area, it would be Philip Grubauer. <laughs> like that dude is all over Denver right now, all over Colorado right now just doing so, like living his yep. best life. Yep. But it's It, it I get the feeling that they feel confident that if Grubauer prices himself out of coming back to Colorado, they have plans. They have other plans. That they feel comfortable finding a guy who can who can help them. For sure. I... And when you look at them, the, the, the situation that I look at I look at what Carolina's done the last couple of years. Now, if you only care about postseason success and you only gauge how successful a team is based strictly on postseason success, then Carolina's not going to be very meaningful to you. But what I think is what I think is interesting is they have consistently built great defenses. And they have put them that great defense in front of mediocre eh, goalies. <laughs> goalies. Yeah. A guy that was on waivers last year ended up as their starter. Yeah. Now injuries played a role in that. But Mrazic and, and Reimer weren't exactly all stars before they got to Carolina. Got they to also weren't all stars in Carolina. But they got they, they got a whole lot closer to being all stars. <laughs> exactly, that's my point. Exactly. Now, does Carolina have a phenomenal goaltending coach that just has the magic touch with every goaltender? The Islanders do, so maybe that's just how it goes. But is it is it the the coaching system? Well, they've had a couple of different coaches there in that time. It hasn't been Rob Brindamore forever. So what? What is it? What's the what's the the constant in Carolina that helped them get quality goaltending out of guys that were eh, goalies? And I think it's the defenses that they've played behind. Yep. And you look at certainly not hard to say the Avs defense is up there in quality as far you, as the NHL is concerned. Yeah. You look at Colorado's defense right now and you look at look there is they're one of the best defenses in the NHL. Yep. They're also going to get better. Connor Timmins year 2. Look that that kid held his own in the postseason last year in what was uh, I what I think was an underrated performance because we focused so much on the failures of that series. But, I mean, we talked about him as potentially one of the better defensemen in that series for the Avs, especially which, when the Avs were struggling. Was certainly part of the reason why they lost. Yes. I, um, but, I yes. can't be your best defenseman, but. Right. But a credit to Timmons. Yeah. Did well. Showed well. You can expect a leap from him in year two. I don't know how big of a leap. That's always the question. How long does it take these guys to get to their peak, right? You can expect a leap from Kale McCarr. It's fair to think that Kale McCarr is going to get better. More so, he's probably just going to improve that consistency than anything else. I mean, all no. of these guys, though, are going to, almost all of these guys are going to take a step in the right direction, get better. Bowen Byram, throw him on the pile. Bowen, Bowen Byram, especially. Yep. You can expect to get better. So it does. They're already a very good defense. So 
why pay right. top dollar for a goaltender? And a goaltender, let's be honest here, a goaltender that was not very good in the majority, in uh, uh, let's say half of the Vegas series. Yeah, I mean, the other... The other side of that question is you have Tampa Bay, right? They just went back to back with Andre Vasilevsky winning the Vesna, but sure. Is do you do you believe Philip Grubauer is of the caliber of Andre Vasilevsky? No, but I don't. Then think that you can't make off. that commitment. Andre, how would you tier your goaltenders in the NHL? I think you have Vasilevsky one. And then even after that, it, it becomes kind of muddled. Obviously, last year, Flurry had a fantastic year. Okay. But do I expect him to keep that up? Not really. No. Okay. So, Hellebuck probably two then? Yeah. I would say Hellebuck two. And then you kind of get into a whole bunch of dudes that are in. It's probably more like, all right, Vasilevsky one, Hellebuck tier one and a half. And then, like, and then you get into like six dudes that are in tier two, yeah, like Carey Price and Mark Andre right. Fleury, and yeah. like these guys that could be exceptional or, or they Bishop could be or something, and... yeah, yeah, right. Um, where do you have Grubauer? Because I don't have him in the top two tiers. I'm, I think I'd probably have him at the bottom of the second tier. Okay, I would have him in the third tier. Yeah, that low. So, and, and that's still, for me, that still puts him in a top 10 ish spot in the NHL. Yeah. Not necessarily, not, you know, I would have him somewhere in eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 range, somewhere in that, somewhere in that area. Sure. You can't, you can't pay top dollar for that. In my, in my opinion. I, I don't, so don't. Don't do what St. Louis did, right? You're right, where they gave six million dollars to hey, Jordan Bennington won a cup. It hasn't it hasn't been good since. Yeah. So it, Right. And don't bury yourself by attaching yourself to a goaltender that can't get it done. But yeah. can a tier three goalie win a cup? Yeah, Jordan Bennington did. Yeah, Jordan Bennington just and did. Any goalie can get hot for a month, right? And, that's and, and that's the, the thing. Yeah. Like we talk about, look, Philip Grubauer's last couple of games in the Vegas series not very good, but they don't win game two without him. They almost stole game three because of him. Yep, and he was awesome in the St. Louis series. Yeah. The, so, I, I mean, it's just a matter of of finding a price point that functions and. As we've talked about many times on this show over the past month or so, paying $6 million when you have the comparables to Grubauer of Bennington and Markstrom, Matt Murray's deals out there too. Oh, God. Grubauer's a better goaltender than those dudes, right? I would take him over those guys, sure. So, so he can justify that kind of price. Right, exactly. And he can justify it based on the market. Can the abs justify it based on what they have available and if he's actually worth it to them? That's the big question here, which is why the defensive conversation is what it is. Grubauer, Vesna finalist, had a great year. Also had 10 games where he faced less than 20 shots or something this year. Yeah. It, it, that's uh, Don't want to take anything away from him, but a lot of goaltenders can win you games when they're facing less than 20 shots a game. Well, that's kind of my that's kind of my point here is if the Avs are going to truly play hardball with a with a, a free agent contract, it should be Gruby. That's the of the three. I think he's the most replaceable of the three. I think he's the one you're worried most about aging deep into a deal. And in my poking around, I I just didn't get the sense that. Philip Philip Grubauer is full stop one hundred percent the man. Like sure. we they they traded for him. They invested three years into him. Um, I don't think our tune has really changed that much 
to be honest. Now I could go back and watch old shows from the end of the season and see what we had to say about him, but I feel like we've been pretty consistent about Grubauer. He's 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 a good goaltender who's coming off of a career year and a contract year. That's a combination that should also worry you. Because contract years are the ones that scare you the most. And I mean, for the record, I think I would still sign him, assuming the contract wasn't outrageous. But also, we're working with the information that we have out here. If the Avs are interested in someone like Darcy Kemper, they can't have Kemper and Grubauer, right? Yeah. You still have Pavel Francouz sitting around. Yep. But you've been, you, you, he's on your books for $2 million. Yep. So... You know, like that's 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 a thing that's happened already. That's committed, right? That the year on that deal exists no matter what. Uh, so certainly, yeah. I, to Brad's point, you can't let both Grubauer and Landy walk. I think that's the fear, right? Yeah. Well, of- and then then all of a sudden you're swimming in cap space, but you just didn't. But you got no players. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like now now you're what? You're overpaying to keep Brandon Sod in desperation? Like you know, you're giving Freddie Anderson a bounce back one year deal and say, hey, come come face twenty shots. You know, like and I mean we can continue this conversation in a little bit because we do need to take our first period break here. As we are brought to you all by DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one rated sportsbook at back sportsbook app out there Uh, use code dnvr when you sign up you can bet one dollar for a chance to win a 150 dollars on the basketball finals if you bet on either team to win their next game you only have to bet one dollar for a chance to win 150 dollars as we learned last game don't do what i say because i said bet on phoenix and uh that didn't work so you know maybe bet on milwaukee Maybe uh, maybe do whatever I don't do and win yourself $150 over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They have a bunch of amazing other bets as well, whether that be on baseball, football, hockey, table tennis, the, the Olympics coming up. I'm sure they'll have all sorts of outrageous bets that I can't wait to get Hell in yeah. on. Gonna be, yeah. bet, gonna be firing off bets on air rifle shooting. Dude. They award the gold medal before the opening ceremonies even happen. Uh, I'm after it. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time. So make sure you download that DraftKings Sportsbook app now to get in on all of that awesomeness. The $1 into $150 in free site credit bet is for a limited time only. Colorado only. Must be 21 or older. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. And we're also brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. You can get their cold brew down at the DNBR bar. Check us out. We're pretty cool down there. Have you guys heard of the Alley special yet? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Alley, yeah. Alley's got the hookup. Um, Ryan has the RK special at the DMVR bar. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own contraption or concoction or however you say that. And most people would think that it had tequila in it. But no, I was sleep deprived. So I mixed our Strava Craft cold brew at the bar with some Breckenridge Distillery Espresso Vodka. Let me tell you, if you need to stay awake, it is fantastic. <laughs> you know what I do to stay awake? Drink Red Bull. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like Red Bull. So. Or an energy drink, actually. Oh, um dang. I've totally, I've totally kicked myself of my Mountain Dew habit, and I only now drink it when I need to actually stay awake. So nice. Yeah. Tomorrow but, when I'm driving. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Like, if you, if you want, if you're like out drinking and you just, it's like an express. Like, I can't have an espresso martini. Those are really popular right now because most of those have like milk in them. But again, it's that espresso vodka. So I decided, why not see what cold brew? The Strava Craft Coffee Cold Brew, which is CBD, stops the jitters, doesn't give you that jittery feeling, and it, it tastes fantastic. It makes the coffee like a little more like vanilla-y. I recommend it. All right. Well, there you go. 
just another reason to become part of the DNBR family. Come get your RK and Alley specials down at the bar. If you sign up for the membership, you get all our exclusive content. You can join the DNBR lounge. You get a free shirt with an annual membership, big beers, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Check us out. We're pretty cool. We do cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, super chat from Carrie here. Do you think they will sign Grubauer? Um, I think, I think ultimately, be- yes. Yeah. The devil that you know versus the devil that you don't. Um, well, here's the conversation, fear. right? Like, do they want to sign Grubauer? I think so. Does Grubauer want to stay? I think so. But I think they're in a situation where they're working on the Landis Scott deal. They're talking to Kale McCarr, and Grubauer is their last, their last one, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna do everything else, yeah. And then they're gonna say, "Look, Gruby, we have X amount of dollars left. Take it or leave it." This is this is where I also think the abs are working backwards um, from where we would have expected. I think that they are prioritizing the Kale McCarr deal um, because I think that there's a big difference if he takes if he takes a three year deal at seven million dollars or six and a half million dollars, you know, whatever. Sure. Suddenly, you have millions of dollars opened up that you weren't expecting to have. If he takes an eight year deal at nine and a half million dollars. Well, for one, you have eight years. Yep. They're done. You have seven years until you have to renegotiate that contract. You have all of the tw- all of his 20s at that point. And then you know the number. And so I think that I think that that's a really I think that that's a really significant piece of business that they would really like to get done in order for them to know exactly what what, spend. Yeah. Yeah. What they have to spend knowing that a year from now, they're going to open up extension negotiations with Nathan McKinnon. Yep. Having, having Kale McCarr grinding through a Kale McCarr long-term deal, six years, seven years, eight years, whatever. Are our extension deals with Nathan McKinnon that complicated? You just you you hand him a check signed by a Karanki that doesn't have a number written on it, right? But I th- I think a year ago we would have said the same thing about Gabe Landeskog. Mm. I think I think I think Gabe Landeskog is probably one of, in theory, on paper, one of the easiest re-signs that a team should ever have. That's true. And right now they are working through it. And I would have full confidence that he was coming back if I didn't inexplicably watch Alex Petrangelo leave in free agency a year ago. All right. So you know, I'm I'm I think I think that, that kind of cavalier attitude towards the Mc, the McKinnon deal. Logically, it makes sense because you and I are like, he's a top three player. You just give him what he wants. Yep. This is easy. Yep. But you also, you also have to, you also have to find the number. You have to find a number that you can work with for however many years it's going to be. You have to find a number that you can work around. You know, the, the, the cap right now, the cap is expected teams. I will say this teams are planning for the salary cap to not rise. In the next five years. Yep. This is not, this was year one of the flat cap, but they are still expecting it. They are, they've been told to plan for five years, five years, five more years of a flat cap. Now, if it goes up, if, if, if it goes up before then, they make the money back. Essentially, the payer, the players pay off the credit card debt that they accrued this last season. Great. That's good for everybody. Do we do we want to get into the Landis Cog tweet here because I think it's kind of relevant to the flat cap situation? Um, 
comparing very relevant. Landis Gog to uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins deal Andy Strickland talks about. The Avs having made three former offers to Landis Gog since 1920, which is two years ago now. A four-year, five-year, and eight-year deals with the eight-year one coming in at a little over $5 million per. Um, so that would be slightly more than what r h got. Uh, the, the shorter deals came in at a higher AAV, but still, that's nowhere near the seven million that we've talked about in the past. And it's to be honest, it's nowhere near what he's going to get offered on the open market for seven years. For sure. Um look the R and H deal, those two players are very, very statistically comparable. Mm-hmm. Um same draft class, same age. Um the R and H deal, I wondered how much the R and H deal would throw a monkey wrench into this because it was it was a pay cut for R and H. Um, I believe he was coming off of a six million dollar contract. Yep. He took he took a nine hundred thousand dollar pay cut. Yeah. And for eight for an eight year deal to sign him for the rest of his playing career, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, just as an aside uh, from the comments, I don't know how the Rantanen contract screwed any of us up. That's a fair deal for him. He's lived up to it. It's perfectly fine. Yep. It was signed it was signed pre-pandemic before anybody knew that this was going to happen. And there, and was always going to make significantly more than Landy. Like, yeah, there's no there are no issues here. So, thank you anyway. very much Daniel for the $10.48 weirdly specific number. It was. <laughs> but yeah. much appreciated all the all the same. We're like, maybe should we chop the yacht fund down into a Miko contract first? A yacht fund is about two and a half Miko deals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in any- you know what we need to, we really need to just look up and see how much the yacht that we want costs. <laughs> there you go. We need to find our yacht. We're just, right? we're, we've just arbitrarily decided $22 million is... Is the yacht that we want. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You know, if, if Landis Cog is looking at Rantanen's contract and says, that's what I want, then maybe he should have tried producing like Rantanen has. Yeah. And that's the reality of it. He's not even in the same, he's not even in the same stratosphere as, as Miko Rantanen's production. So close. Yeah. It's not, no, I don't even think, I don't even think the most desperate of UFA teams will give him $9 million. Miko literally led the abs in scoring in the regular season and then popped off in the playoffs too. So. Yeah. So anyway, (laughs) they're not, they're not, they're not in the same, they're not in the same ballpark. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be all that close in contracts. Yep. Um, Especially with a flat cap, man. Right. It's just, and we've seen it like it goes beyond R and H. You've seen so many dudes deals come in significantly lower than what they were talking about two years ago. Yeah, it, it's just the reality of teams are going to set their price, and that's what it's going to be. And and yeah, no doubt the prices will be higher if a player actually gets to free agency. But it's not going to be some team isn't going to Jeff Skinner, Gabe Landeskog. They're not going to go full insanity and and give him a billion dollars as an as a person who's 28 for a million years you know yeah i also like there's all this there's all this stuff about how the blues are gonna go ham here you know oh the blue watch out watch out for the blues like they're gonna they're gonna make the big play here and like okay maybe like maybe they do but they, it would be, obviously Landy's a good player, but he would become arguably their best player, their best forward, arguably, and next to O'Reilly. Best forward, you're in trouble. Yeah, and that's, and I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, there's just a lot of, there's just a lot of, I'm like, look, if he wants to go and do that, if he wants to go live in St. Louis and like he wants to do that to himself, ask Paul Stasny how it worked. <laughs> you know, like he got traded by the end of that deal. Well, and 
I mean, in a world where Landis Gog ends up not in Colorado, he has to ask himself the question of what does he want? It's, does he want money or does he want to go somewhere that he can win? Yeah, I I would tell you just my personal feeling here. Um, if he if he actually leaves Colorado, I would I would be on the lookout for Toronto. All right then. I don't know. I don't. They would obviously have to find a way to make the money work. Um, I mean, I guess he played junior in Kitchener, right? So yeah, but I think I think Toronto would be one that you really have to well, keep an eye out. So. Anyway, I don't really want to continue to live in that yep. world. Um, <laughs> Anna, Anna asked earlier, um, "Do you do you know about our confidence in him resigning?" I'm. I still feel good about it. They understand his importance. Um, they get it. They they know, but they also they also have a salary cap that they have to operate inside of, and. It's funny because a lot of the people who are, oh, they, the Avs need to find a way to dump EJ and this and that were very excited the day he signed his seven-year deal. And, and living in a... Ending right now. Well, and, and living, in a, living in a world of, you know, they... Oh, you just you have to do what you have to do to keep your guys, and then you pay for it later. Well, the ads are paying for the Johnson thing now. Yep. And I just, you know, you just have to be careful. That's the thing. You have to be careful. Yep. I I think that it gets done, but they have to be careful. The the one thing I will say, just kind of a, a counterpoint to that is by the end of Landy's deal, the abs and the rest of the league will presumably be beyond the flat cap. It'll be back to going up, assuming it's a five plus year deal. Um, and we've seen going back before the flat cap, you can find ways to dump money. Yep. Obviously it's been <laughs> extremely difficult over the last couple of years, but in a, in a world where every team thinks the cap's going up, teams can take money from you. So I do think that's part of the consideration for Landis Gog is they may have that safety valve at the end of that deal. Let's um let's get into dumping money next segment. Sure. Um we didn't even really talk about yeah, Darcy Kemper. Darcy Kemper here. Yeah. We didn't even talk about him. We talked about Groovy and like him leaving and stuff. We didn't, we didn't even get into the fact that you know if if um Look, if if Landy doesn't sign, we'll get into that when that happens. When Landy doesn't sign, yeah. Yeah, because that will be... It's all speculation until it actually happens, right? Yeah, the the, 20, the 28th is just under two weeks now away. Yep. It's 13 days away. So there's still... there's It feels, it feels like doom and gloom right now. Everything feels awful. Look, um, it, but, you know. The expansion protected lists are due in two days. Yeah. When Landy's on that list, you can take a little bit of a breath. Or if, if he's not, then you can start freaking out, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So, Darcy Kemper. We'll just get into this because this was the specific rumor for today. Look, we've been big fans of Darcy Kemper on this pod for a couple of years. Uh, he didn't have the greatest year in Arizona last year, but again, of course, nobody did. Yep. Um, I mean, goaltending is what makes that team competitive or not for yeah the past handful of years. Honestly, this and, this would be another. I wonder where Ryan Graves fits into this. Yeah. Uh, they're uh, they're an organization that. Likes Ryan Graves. Um, they need help on defense. Right now, they have three players signed on defense in OEL, Jacob Chikrin, and Ilya Labushkin. And one of those is OEL. <laughs> yeah, and one of those they're trying to move in OEL. And, you know, I know they've got some they've got some defenders, um, you know, namely Victor Soderstrom, that uh, got some NHL minutes at the end of the year. 
So, you know, there's another guy. Great. Sure. They right. still need they still need something, right? Yeah. I think I think uh, a Kemper deal, you know, Graves would make sense there. Yeah, I um, mean, we talked yeah. about we talked about Connor Garland earlier. Um, you know, I I that would be the ads having to I think add quite a bit, probably a first round pick. Um, if they wanted to make that happen, I would. If they wanted to do it this way, Kemper would be intriguing and probably not cost the first rounder. Well, yeah. the problem with Darcy Kemper though is he's got one year left on his deal at four and a half million. So you're not you're still getting you're still paying more for a goaltender this year. But then you're going into UFA again next year. He's 31. It's it's and, like can one year down the road really worth it. Yeah. Right. And then the other the other really big factor here, and I mean the really big factor here, Darcy Kemper's had a lot of injuries. Yep. And I will say that if you if you set the Garland stuff aside for a second, and you Definitely. look at Graves for Kemper as far as contract value, your Kemper costs four point five for the next year. So yep. you're on the cheap if Graves is going back the other way. You're you're essentially only adding one point five, less than one point five million to your cap hit by yeah. picking up Kemper and removing Graves. And obviously, you're freeing up all the money you were paying Grubauer if you're doing this. Yep. Um, so from a cap saving standpoint, I think there's definitely interest there, but to your final point, the abs are no stranger to having an injury prone goaltender. Yeah. And this is like, like even when Varley was like tagged as injury prone, it was kind of overblown a little bit. Yeah. He consistently played more than 50 games a year for the abs. Darcy Kemper in the last two seasons, 29 games played, 27 games played. I mean, look at look outside of 18-19, he's played 30 games once beyond that. Yeah. And that's I mean, he's he was a backup for a long time. Yep. And so that's why his games played numbers are lower uh earlier in his career is because he was the backup. He got to he got to Arizona, they gave him the starter job. Gave him Eh, I don't know about Gabe, but he took it. <laughs> he took the starter job, and he was he's been exceptional for a couple of years now. But the injury problems there are very real. Yeah, and if there's if there's one thing that people in their thirties are notorious for, it's being healthier than they were in their twenties. Right. That's a uh, that's a that's thing. exactly I'm, how it works. I'm right. Ready to experience that myself. People in their 30s are always healthier than they were in their 20s. They bounce back so much faster. <laughs> oh, boy. Great. You're really selling it to me. Yeah. So, big concern there. I mean, this is a guy that's two years older than Philip Grubauer, and he's, he's, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, right? Definitely. But I, t- I tell you... Darcy Kemper would be fun. We've been a big fan, but it wouldn't be very much fun when Pablo Francois has to start 25 straight games because Darcy Kemper got hurt again. Yep. And I mean, that's, I think that's a good point, right? No matter what you do, whether it be committing big money to Grubauer or committing to Darcy Kemper or going with Freddie Anderson for a rebound year, there's risk involved full stop no matter who yeah. you go with there's no perfect answer i mean chat brings him up linus olmark there's a huge there's a huge question mark there too <laughs> are you a linus olmark believer me personally no yeah me either i'm not i also wouldn't say that i'm a huge skeptic i'm i'm a i'll let somebody else take that chance yep I'm, I don't feel strongly either direction. It's hard to take that chance if you're the Avs as a top contender in the league, right? You want yeah. something more established. Yeah. All yeah, right. see, the idea that Dredger is where Grubauer is three years ago, Phil Grubauer had 100 games played in his career, and at the time, for a goaltender with 100 games played in his career, had the, had the highest save percentage in NHL history. The best goalie through 100 games ever. 
just in terms of save percentage. So Chris Dreger is not in the same spot that Phil Grubauer was three years ago. And to my point, I just made the abs aren't in the same spot they were three years ago. The abs had an opportunity as a team that was just starting to be playoff relevant again to take a chance on a goaltender that yeah. maybe they, they don't have right now. Yeah, I mean, right now, Colorado's uncertainty in net is setting them up to kind of repeat what the San Jose Sharks did through Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe's careers. Yeah. Where they just cycled through trying to find goaltenders, and that's how they ended up with the Martin Jones fiasco. And that's so that you have to be right careful. there, basically. Yeah. That's that's the fear, right? Like, that's the fear. But they signed Philip Grubauer, they lock him down. Okay, great. They have a guy. They have a guy for the next, however long. But how good is he? What does Grubauer give you? For sure. Um, I really like Grubauer. I think he's a really good goaltender. But oof. you just well, have to. There, there could be sticker shock there. Yep. Well, look, we do know Grubauer wants to be here in Colorado, so. If you want your lady or man friends to be like Grubauer and want to be in your bedroom, Manscaped is the tools for you. Head on over to Manscaped. (laughs) Head on over to Manscaped.com. Use code DNVR20 to get 20% off the perfect package 4.0. And you can get the... Uh, lawnmower 4.0 to trim up all of your all of your needs. All right, you know when you're when you're presenting a package, whether it be a contract package to Grubauer or your package to someone you're trying to get in bed with, you want it to look good, right? And that's where Manscaped comes into play. <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> in any case. They make a bunch of amazing products beyond just trimming your balls as well. You can get their face trimmers. They have deodorant. They have toner. They have breath mints. You name it. They got you covered. Head on over there. Check them out. Also brought to y'all by Chevalier Mortgage. Both Mike and Virginia have been in the business for a very long time now. And if you're like me, trying to find a home right now is very difficult to find an affordable one. So they can get you all hooked up, not just with a great rate, but Mike is also a financial planner. So he will look at your full financial picture and can find the right home alone for you. So they got you fully covered. Head on over to dnbrmortgage.com. Enter for your chance to get a free consultation, obviously, but also you can win some free DNBR merch over there. You can also reach Virginia directly at 303-257-6578. We know it's stressful trying to buy a home right now, but Mike in Virginia will take care of you. Michael Chevalier, NMLS 1931006. Virginia Chevalier, NMLS 1910631. Also brought to y'all by uh, Green Mountain Dental Group. So earlier this week, if you didn't want teeth like mine, go to Green Mountain Dental Group. But now I have good teeth. Go to Green Mountain Dental Group to get your good teeth as well. They will hold. (laughs) <laughs> right now i have good teeth turned turned missing teeth into quality teeth just like that green mountain dental group has the hookup for you if you schedule a cleaning x-ray and exam with them they will get you a free sonicare electric toothbrush as well so they'll take care of you all the way down everyone who's switched over with us has said that they do an amazing job so just 15 minutes from downtown over in lakewood check them out too Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Do we want to get into uh, the the money dump potential situations for the abs here? Yeah. All right. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with EJ? Yeah. All right. So. I think that it has to start there. Um Look, Seattle not having any players, uh, any NHLers, I should say. I don't know. What's his name? Luke Henman? Is that his name? The one guy that they've signed? I, I don't even know who they're. They're Luke. Uh, what? Vegas signed Reed? His last Reed name? Reed Duke. Reed Duke. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. I don't know. Who yeah. they're Reed. Oh, it is. It's Luke Henman. Great. All right. I mean, there you go. AJ nails it, as usual. Yeah, I'd say. 
Um, I tell you, uh, without with them having nobody on it right now, um, they. What is? I'll ask this. What is too high of a price for to, to get rid of the deal? Essentially, for dumping Eric Johnson's deal, would you move this year's first? I think so. Okay, you're already at. I think so. Yeah. So where's your line? I I think it's the first. Anything more than that, I think is it's that's it. No, for me, yeah. Okay. Now, so I mean, if they said if they said a first and third, you would still say no. Probably no. But I mean, look, it gets really complicated really fast because it's like, well, what if we throw JT Comfer's deal into that? How does that change the picture, right? Because where are teams going to value someone like JT Comfer as a functional, serviceable NHL center potentially for them? (laughs) But boy, that's selling him hard. I know. But. That's the that's the upsell, right? Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Francis, we have a how old is he now? Twenty six? Twenty six year old third line center. We have a twenty six year old third line center <laughs> who's played all forward positions, can play anywhere between lines one and four, and kills penalties and moonlights on the on the power play. He's a guy that averages about 15 goals and 30 points per year when he's playing well. He's signed for two more years at three and a half million dollars. <laughs> Come on down and get him. <laughs> like, welcome please. to the NHL free agency dating show. <laughs> you, you, you do not have pro scouts, correct? <laughs> You also don't have a subscription to the NHL's video service, correct? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that's the hard sell, right? Like that's the that is the a great you you nailed it. That's the dating show sell for dating yeah, for JT Comper. Exactly, but regardless of the sell, my point being, uh, there are ways the Avs could look to package more than one deal. To, to shed cap. Yeah, but if you're... So, if you trade JT Comfer to Seattle, then what? Like, what do you attach to him to do right. it instead? Right, and that that's the question that I don't know, but... I mean, what's the... What's the... What is the line there? I, I definitely wouldn't give up a first to move Comfer, unlike EJ. I'll put it that way. Okay, so what's the line there? Because you remember, they don't have any... They, they don't it, have a I mean, second it, this year and right. a second next year. It has to be the third, I guess, right? So... So it's good. So the third this year, and that's it? What if it was two-thirds? Uh, Too much? I, I, it, that's probably right about where I'd be uncomfortable with it, but... Okay, so that's probably the right area then. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but I mean, you know, maybe the second thirds pick a third or fourth round prospect that they like or whatever. But okay, I'm. <clears throat> I don't know. I think if you're doing that, man, it's got to be it's got to be EJ sure. because if if he's not healthy for next year. He could just go on LTIR and it's fine. Yep. And at any point, if he if he becomes healthy, they can just play him. They shouldn't have cap problems. Now, Colorado needs that six million dollars, and they either need it on the ice or they need it on LTIR. Yep. One or the other. Yep. The problem is they don't know. If they LTIR him, they can't comfortably do it for an entire season. Like what is right. what just happened with because Kucherov and what Montreal is now trying to do with Shea Weber. EJ could just be better and back at at one point, right? This isn't yeah. a this isn't a we have 
a specific injury with Kucherov that you know the timeline on, and it happens to line up with a 56 game season quite well. Yeah. From from uh, from what I've heard, EJ is not quite back yet. He's not there yet. If if the Abs were, you know, if this was last year in the bubble and they were playing in the middle of July, uh, or getting ready to play in the middle of July, he would not be going. I don't I don't think he would be ready to go. So from what I heard, from what I've heard, he's not he's not there yet. When will he be? That's is the question mystery and. Man. That's that's why I think if you're trying if they're trying to bail on money, that's the money to do it. And I don't I don't know that there is. I mean, look, if they ask for three first round picks, then you know you you tell them to eat your ass and you move on. Like right. you don't. It's not hard, yeah. Right, like you don't mess with that. That's obviously stupid. But if they say this year's first round pick, you know this that's where that's that's where this year's draft class is. <laughs> That's where this year's draft class is glass half full or glass half empty. You're you're either looking at it and you're saying we can get, you know, the volatility of this year's draft class means we could get a great player at 27. <laughs> the approach that I've taken is these guys missed a whole year of development. I don't even want to mess with this class. So for me, that 27th pick, like, if the abs make it, I'll be excited. We'll talk him up. We'll talk about the pros, talk about the cons, how he fits, what his timeline is. We have a whole goddamn show planned for next week for that thing. Just in case they make that pick. But if they move it for any value, it also feels pretty okay. Yeah. If they if they send that thing to Seattle, I would be completely fine with that. <laughs> Our producers are having a meltdown about AJ's AJ's quote <laughs> in the background. I mean, I was just like, oh, excuse me, what? Did he just <laughs> He didn't say that. No, he did. And there's people in the comments now spelling it out. <laughs> yeah, and look, EJ EJ is if they if he's healthy, he's he's a he's a plus player for you somewhere. You know, what role does he play? Where does he ultimately fit in? The, the lots of things to be de- 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 determined. But how long? How long is he healthy? You know he's a ticking time bomb. Look at his whole career. Yep. I just don't know how they can take that chance. A Six million dollars. Look, if they knew if EJ was was going to miss the whole year, or they said take the whole year off, get healthy, we will see you next season, and they LTIR'd it and for for just this one year. Great. I would have no issues with that. That's fine. But they they just for me, I they I feel like I, I've always been like, I want EJ around. He's a great dude. He's an important guy, veteran leader, and blah blah blah. But the money, the money, the juice is not worth the squeeze at this point. Yep. The money, the money is too much or too uh, too unreliable of of a situation. And I would be I would be banging down. Seattle's door and just being like, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Just just get rid of it. This this whole situation starts to feel like a little bit of a house of cards right now, right? It's waiting for the first shoe to drop because we've talked about someone like a Ryan Suter or or someone like an EJ. Maybe he makes more sense on the lineup if Ryan Graves gets taken by Seattle or the Avs move Ryan Graves right. out, but that hasn't happened yet. Kale McCarr hasn't signed yet. Landis Gog hasn't signed yet the abs are kind of in this in between gray area where they don't have solid knowledge of what exactly their cap looks like, what yeah. exactly their roster looks like yeah. at this point. So, so I, I would assume the expansion drafts will give a bit more clarity to that. Look, I for me, best case, best case scenario is, Colorado finds a way to 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 dump EJ's money, mm-hmm. and I hate that on a personal level, on a human level, I hate it. But on a hockey business level, it makes the most. But sense. from the remove remove the sentimentality from this. Yep. Dump it. 
Uh, and then, and then look, if Seattle buys them out, then, you know, maybe you're in the money there, but whatever. <laughs> right back on the 700. Yeah, KD. The, the, <laughs> there you go. Um, but that, but, but you, my, I think my ideal is that you move him and then they take up, they take somebody in expansion. Yep. I think that's, that's pretty expected. So. That I think would be, you know, you you, you deal with it, whatever it is. Yeah, like, you yeah. lose that money, and then look, maybe a, a one or two year deal for Ryan Suter. I really, it's got to be a one year deal. I'm not taking two yeah, year. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take a two year deal with him either. Uh, or or other other defensemen. You know, Adam Larson Alexiak, still hasn't been signed. Alexiak still hasn't been signed. You know, pick your favorite. whatever whatever the conversation is, man. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, yeah, it's, that's, that's just where that gives you, that gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, right now they are sitting on 23.7 million in cap space. God, it's, it's crazy how three players just chew that up. Yeah. So, all right. Gun to your head. McCarr, Landy and Grubauer all back next year. Obviously, McCarr will be back. He's an RFA. But... Gun to my head, yes. Okay. So, don't don't slam that panic button just yet. All right. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Breathe a little bit. Wait for the expansion draft protected list to come out. Assess from there, one yeah. step at a time. Yep. All right. I like the way that sounds. Uh, some other. Uh, I don't know how relevant this is, but the Avs. Thanks to Luke Hawking in the chat, by the way, for mentioning this. They did just sign a new amateur scout in uh, Jamie Porter from the Edmonton Oil Kings. Wade Klippenstein. Yes. Working his WHL uh, connections there for sure. Yep. There you go. So. Yeah, this bringing up the Matt Calvert deal is asinine. It's a total waste of everybody's time. It's irrelevant. The world is completely different. It's just a different world today than it was a couple of years ago. So yep. anything pre flat cap is just, it's hard to assess any of that basically. Yeah. Yeah. It signing Ranton and um, sometimes signing RFAs takes all summer and that could happen with Kale McCarr. But I think that they, they really want to get it done. They really want to get it done to know that number. So it could take all it could take all off season. That's just a possibility. That's just that's reality. realistic. Yeah. yeah. Especially especially for uh a market that has Quinn Hughes and Miro Heiskinen also in it that are unsigned. Yep. Those guys are all gonna use each other as benchmarks. So first one first one to sign sets the market. It's always hard to convince that guy to be first. Everyone wants to get fair value, right? So yeah, McCarr's not doing eight by eight. If he did an eight by eight, this podcast would de- two months ago. Yeah, <laughs> but this podcast will devolve into a party. <laughs> and that dipshit on Twitter that said that our uh, our our podcast is just a bunch of frat boy idiots will actually become true. <laughs> Oof. So when we're frat boy idiots, you know the apps did something right. Confirm that's right. Ex- exactly. <laughs> All right. So, any final thoughts on the the rumors of the day? What uh, anything else to expect? Maybe AJ. Um, I will say I would not be. Don't be super surprised if you wake up on Sunday morning and the Amps protected eight skaters. All right. Not super surprised. A little. But super, but not super surprised. I don't have thoughts on Lawson Krause. Good, good, good luck to him in Arizona for the rest of his life. I guess. <laughs> I don't. I don't think about him. <laughs> All right. Well, that's gonna do it for today's show. We will be back tomorrow, or at least I will be back tomorrow, likely with Evan, maybe Blaze, uh, to to chat some more ab stuff. AJ will likely be driving home to Colorado. I will be certainly Saturday and or Sunday. Um, 
I don't. We're 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 in. We're still deciding on tomorrow. There's right. some there's some scheduling. Will be in his car tomorrow. How about that? So yeah. Uh, we'll either see. way, we'll figure it out. We'll talk to y'all again at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you for watching, listening, however you consume the podcast. We appreciate all of you. I wasn't mean to wild fans. <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe to the video. Hit the notification bell if you want to see every single time we go live. I'm going to go enjoy another day of the race to world first. We'll talk to you all later.